This is a bird's eye view of the virtual reality theater called the cave. Each edge of that cube is seven to ten feet. At the corners are speakers to provide a sound environment. Associated with each face of the cube is a projector and a computer graphics system to generate the views in that direction. One of the faces of the cube is left off so that people can easily enter and exit the virtual reality theater. Hi, I'm Dan Sandine, and we're now sitting in the CAVE, which stands for CAVE Audio Visual Environment, excuse me, CAVE Audio Visual Environment. And uh, the CAVE in the CAVE acronym refers to both the early cave paintings and to the shadows of the ideal forms in Plato's CAVE. This particular virtual reality project developed here at the Electronic Visualization Laboratory is based on projectors rather than on head-mounted displays or uh, boom-mounted displays. The glasses that I'm wearing here are simply 3D glasses uh, that let me see the images in depth. Like all virtual reality uh, projects that depend on 3D projections, the computer needs to know where you are in the environment. And mounted on these 3D classes, we have the Pulhima sensor, uh, which allows the computer to find out where I am in the room. From that point, we generate the correct views so that the perspective project is based on my viewing position rather than being based on an arbitrary point in space, usually the center of the screen, spaced back. One of the real differences, and I think important moves in the virtual or artificial reality project, is the fact that it includes a new kind of perspective, a perspective that's based on the viewer's position rather than the perspective that's based on some mythical camera sitting in space. In this particular view, you're only seeing two of the projection screens, and we're at a corner right here. In the system as uh, proposed, there will be five screens, including the floor, the ceiling, and the wall that you're now looking through. One of the areas of the cube, one of the faces of the cube, will be left open so people can easily enter and exit the cube, and also so that people not in the cave can view what's going on in the cave. There are a number of advantages to using projection technology rather than head-mounted or boom-mounted technology. For one, one is much less encumbered. It's a less invasive technology. Um, you wear light 3D glasses. Presently, these are of the active LCD switching types, but are really not much more encumbering than a typical pair of sunglasses. This could also be implemented in switched Polaroid projection, in which case you'd be wearing the same kind of glasses that you do in a 3D uh, theatrically released film. A second major advantage, which also has to do with this non-invasive nature, is the fact that combining reality with virtual reality is straightforward. In the head-mounted or boom-mounted display, you are either in the real reality or you're in the virtual reality. There's no easy way to combine the two. And as a matter of fact, one in those systems is put in what I consider to be the ludicrous position of having to redevelop your hand in front of your face to be able to see it. Of course, this is something you only can do in rather poor approximation. In a head-mounted display or a boom-mounted device, when I rotate my head like that, the pictures generated in the virtual reality are very disparate, are very much uh, different for each frame. And as a matter of fact, in a normal um, head-mounted display, if I move my head like that, what appears to me is the world appears to move with me and then slowly move back into its proper position because of the delays involved. Now one can say that as technology gets faster, uh, the delays will get shorter. And that, of course, is true, but that will be completely countered by one's wish to have more detailed quality in the images, essentially higher rendering values. So we'll always want to run these displays within a maximum amount of time allowed to rendering. Another advantage of the projection approach to virtual reality versus uh, head-mounted and boom-mounted displays is the ability for more than one person to share the experience. Several people can look at the same screens I'm looking at, although I will only be getting the correct perspective project from the viewpoint of one person in this case, kind of where the glasses are, but everybody else in the room can see clearly what's going on in the display. They're just seeing it from the from one person's perspective. Of course, we're very used to that because all the non-virtual reality systems that we now look at are based on some mythical projection position 
typically in the center of the room, but yet we have no trouble decoding that information being slightly offset. Next, we'd like to uh, show you some different applications we have in the environment and how a person interacts with them. By putting the three space tracker and a video camera on a person, we can move around the environment and you can see the views that would be generated if you were in the environment moving around. Of course, we are doing this in monoscopic vision rather than stereo vision because standard TV does not support stereo vision. In this model, we are testing interpolating the viewer's position between frames so that we can get smoother animation in this uh, example. Here in this architectural space, uh, we generated many objects in the scene to demonstrate that you can get above and below objects and by moving to the right and left you can see different parts of the scene. There are many things that need improvement here. We need to synchronize the two screens together better and we need to improve our response time and consistency from the three space tracker. But as you can see, even here mediated by television, the illusion of depth is quite convincing. The first public display of the cave will be at the High Performance Computing and Communications Research Exhibit at Seagraph 92 in Chicago. There we will mostly concentrate on scientific visualization examples. There will be an atmospheric model over the U.S. and the participant will be able to walk through the Kuwaiti oil fires. In the mathematical area, there will be strange attractors and the participant will be able to walk through hyperbolic geometries. In the medical area, there will be an anatomical atlas of a near-term fetus and displays of the anatomy and metabolism of the human brain.